What's up everybody, it's T Sequel Tuesday and this month's topic is technical challenges that you've conquered. If you're unfamiliar with T Sequel Tuesday, it's a monthly sequel related prompt where everyone in the community gets together and talks about the same issue. The technical challenge that I want to talk about this month refers to logins and just access to the SQL server. Now I know logins generally are like a DBA 101 kind of topic, but I'm more of a developer, I generally don't have to deal with logins and permissions and users and so this is a totally new thing for me to learn. So last week I was writing a blog post about how to generate the uh, create scripts for different objects in your database and I wanted to figure out exactly what permissions did I need to be able to run that uh, command by right clicking on the, the database name, going to tasks and choosing generate scripts. And so I decided to start from scratch. So I created a new SQL login, I created a new user, and I wanted to kind of figure out what permissions were needed in order to run that. So the technical challenge that I quickly had was that after creating my login, after creating my user, I thought I had everything kind of working and I decided to just test to make sure I can connect to SQL Server with that new login. Now, normally I'm used to using Windows authentication, so I figured, heck, if I'm learning uh, all about logins and users and everything, let me create a just SQL login instead. Let's see how that works. Should be the same thing, right? Well, I was wrong because when I tried to connect to my server, I was getting an error message. And that error message was really vague. It didn't really, you know, it wasn't clear cut like what I needed to do. So the first thing I kind of did was, all right, let me just search on Google for the error message. Let me see if anything comes up immediately with how to fix it. Unfortunately, my Google foo wasn't, you know, all that hot that day because I kept finding these, you know, answers saying my credentials were not good and I like quadruple checked that I was typing in the, the SQL login and the password correctly when trying to connect and that wasn't it. So, you know, Google didn't really help me immediately. So I figured, well, you know, what do I do next? And it's, it's interesting because definitely in the past, I used to just keep Googling for answers. Um, but more and more recently, I found myself to just be going straight to the MSDN documentation for SQL Server to look for answers. So side note, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but I feel like anytime I do search for Stack Overflow or like the MSDN forums, I keep getting threads that are like five years old, referring to old versions of SQL Server. It's really hard to find answers that are related to current versions of SQL Server. I mean, in this case, I don't think it mattered that much, but it's, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing that. So anyway, I went to the Create Login MSDN Books Online page and I read through that sucker. There were all these different examples and there was the specific one that I had done, you know, Create Login, and it didn't really mention anything special. It seemed like I did everything right. So I, I mean, I even I created then a second login, a second user, make sure I could do everything like I normally could. Um, and I just, I couldn't get it to work. Right, so now I'm getting really frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, all right, come on, Bert, this should be really simple. Like, you're just creating a login and you want to connect to SQL Server. This is like task number one on a new DBA's checklist, right? Why can't you figure this out? I was getting more frustrated and uh, I ended up just, you know, powering through a brute force in my, you know, Google and Bing search queries until I did finally stumble across a solution buried like three answers deep in a Stack Overflow thread. And it turned out that I needed to turn on mixed authentication mode for my SQL Server uh, so that not only Windows authentication would be allowed, but SQL Server uh, logins would be allowed as well. This is something I never knew since I'm always just used to using Windows authentication and when I installed my server, that was what I installed on default. So that's it, I figured out my answer and it seemed like it was a lot harder than it should have been. Uh, I was kind of doing this late at night, uh, which I know from the past isn't always the best time to try to be troubleshooting issues that seem frustrating. Um, and that's especially true because then the next day I did Google search for it again and somehow I don't know what my exact search phrase difference was, but you know, when I searched for it the next day, uh, the first Google result was exactly what I wanted um, in telling me to switch to mix authentication mode, uh, which would have allowed the SQL login. So I think my takeaway from this is just if you're tired, don't try to force yourself to, you know, brute force the answer of a problem. Maybe just go take a break and figure it out the next day. So that's it for me this week. Uh, I know it wasn't the most technical of problems. You know, most DBAs out there probably knew the answer as soon as I said, you know, SQL login and it wouldn't connect to the server. But now I know that too, right? That's the best way to kind of learn is to force your way through a problem. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys again next month for T-SQL Tuesday, hopefully. I'll definitely see you again next week for my regular vlog posts. 
if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any technical challenges you want to talk about uh, and didn't make it for T-SQL Tuesday, just share in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.